folks, Kevin Eno8 here. Um, I haven't posted a, a, I don't know, podcasty type video to Fight Designer uh, a YouTube channel in a while, but uh, I've had a number of, of colleagues asking about things like setups for remote teaching, and since I've been doing a, so far at least primarily online uh, stage combat class this semester, I wanted to, to maybe share some of what's worked for me and what hasn't as well, things like that, um, and show a bit of my setup. So, uh, this is just going to be a crappy handheld cell phone video and my furnace is making sound and all, but I um, should be able to give you a little tour anyway. So, um, I do teach all my courses on Zoom right now. We may, we'll have some probably in-person sessions later with Stage Combat, but that means that uh, I do use a, a green screen backdrop for a lot of my Zoom classes. Stage Combat, sometimes I can't just because it, it makes it a little harder to see sometimes what's happening. So I usually turn off the green screen back or fake background thing when I'm, when I'm doing movement stuff. Um, but, uh, I do have a, a decent range now, even if I'm not using it as a green screen, it means that people don't have to see the big mess that is my basement. I'm teaching in my basement, <laughs> and I've got low ceilings here. Uh, I put up some of this acoustic foam that I just got cheap off eBay because this plaster stuff really echoed the sound back, and I've got kids doing online school upstairs and things like that. So in addition to the, the soundproofing, I also hung some stuff. Um, to help absorb sound coming up and down the stairs. I've got another piece of like eggshell foam over the door up there. Lights. I have a weird smattering of video lights that I've accumulated over the years from different things. Some of them have like built-in diffusion. Uh, these are uh, GVM uh, LED lights that can run off of a, a battery or can be plugged in. I like the idea of being able to run things off batteries sometimes, but uh, when I'm here, I don't have to be constantly charging things. So I keep these plugged in. Uh, this is a YN600. Um, I've got a YN300 over there that I'm not using right now. Um, but yeah, for me, what I want is wide and diffuse. I've got a, a ring light as well, though I'm not even really using it as a ring light. I'm just using it as a general light. Wide and diffused is better. Otherwise, you get these hot spots that don't work as well with a uh, green screen. Um, so most of these, like this one's got a little cloth soft boxy kind of thing over it. Most of them have a little slide in or slide out, which side does it come out of on this? Um, a plexiglass kind of thing that can, can work as a, a way to get a little bit of diffusion in them. So something like that can help even out the lighting a little bit. Um, I don't want a spotlight and something like this, just not when I'm teaching movement in a, in a small space. I don't need that. Um, other things, I have bare cement floors in my, in my basement. So I did get a, a throw rug. I tried putting down some of the rubber puzzle matty stuff but these always end up getting kind of stretched out and then they don't stick together anymore. So I did have to get a little quarter inch um, uh, carpet pad to stick under it, partly just to keep the, the throw rug from bunching up every time I do stuff back and forth or do falls or whatever. It seems to be working so far. It's still not exactly level, but it's what I've got. The, the rug also lets me run uh, cables for the lights under it, so I'm gonna trip over those. And I've got these beams kind of built in, so I was able to just clip this up for at least some of it. Um, I had the punching bag anyway, but it makes a nice partner sometimes. Um, but I also have on one of the pillars here, uh, <laughs> hung a mask, I put a, a little pad. And this thing, this was a uh, um, uh, bike stand, is what this was sold as, a bike repair stand. It was supposed to be wall mounted. And what I have found, since I don't really have a training partner uh, is that this gives me a, a fold-out arm that can conceivably, when I want it to, fold a training sword. And I got some of these polypropylene trainers um, on sale with the thought that I can either keep them full length or cut them down. Um, for when you have students who are like me in a place with low ceilings. So this is a cold steel one that I cut down. The tape's just so we can keep track of true edge, false edge. But this lets me have a little bit more practice of proper form without putting holes in my ceiling um, or, or knocking over furniture. So I can still learn to go through the basic cuts and parries and things with this. I can understand grip. You know, there's a lot that I can do with, with just a forte and not a full sword. Um, but I also can have some of these on that training arm. I can change the angle. Um, and this will allow me to talk a little bit about doing parries and, and sort of glissades and things, although the, the wrist isn't flexible, it doesn't change angle quite the way a real one would. Um, I haven't gotten the sword stuff yet. We'll be doing that soon. 
but that was one thought. But then once I had that, um, I was like, you know what? I also want to be able to use it almost like a, a Wing Chun wooden dummy. But I do do uh, uh, paper mache masks and things. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make a paper mache arm <laughs> that also mounts on that same thing. So this can also just slide onto that same base. And now, this way, now I have sort of an arm so I can talk about avoids, traps, blocks, um, gives me a, a little something else to do, boom, uh, to use as a, as a training dummy. Um, so that's another gratuitous toy. The other thing though, like doing reactions is a little hard with the static thing. So here's another silly thing. And I stole this idea from uh, Jeff Kent, uh, Fight Masters based in Denver, but does a lot of work elsewhere as well. Ah, oh, it fell off. Oh no, and this is the problem with these Archie McPhee novelty toys is that sometimes they're not the sturdiest. But this is my, uh, my, my other teaching partner. This is Will Shakespeare. And he's just got little levers in the back that make his jabs go out. So, you know, you can use this to talk a little bit about how to do reactions to hits. <laughs> it's silly, but it works on Zoom. The other thing that I kind of tried as a training buddy, this was a, this is my inflatable doll. <laughs> this was sold as a, a Halloween decoration. The idea being that you, you blow it up and you uh, put scarecrow clothes on it and leave it on your porch or something to be spooky. Um, but this is, this is my, uh, my other potential training partner. I just taped some wire and stuff along the back so I could maybe try and pose the arms a bit. Didn't really stay well enough. I'm gonna have to do stronger wire. Um, and also just, a little foam on there because the, the arms weren't really long enough. So this will sometimes let me talk about how to set things up with a partner, um, how to move things through. Um, but I also, you, know, you can see I've added the, the SAFD targeting numbers so that I imagine once I start talking about uh, sword parries and sword targets, that's going to come up a lot more and be, be more useful. Um, so we can have a, a visual in terms of what am I aiming for on these targets? Where, uh, where does that go? What is high center? What is low center? That kind of stuff. Um, it's not great. Uh, I've got it just kind of clipped up here for now so I can, uh, get rid of it when I don't want it and just hang it up real quick when I need to. Um, so yeah, you know, not perfect, but for 20 bucks, you're not going to find perfect. And the, the actual like stuffed dummies or wrestling dummies for BJJ, those things are expensive or, or the, the, you know, the Bob punching targets that have like the, the face and torso molded in. They're a couple hundred bucks. I, I'm, I can't afford that, nor do I have a place to store it. Whereas this, I can just deflate it when I need to. Here's another thing. Sometimes with these non-contact hits, you want to be able to show multiple angles. Um, so I had an old phone still that works. Uh, it doesn't have self-service or anything, but it can still do Wi-Fi. So I was able to get this uh, to where I can join Zoom with a second device. So while I'm zooming in on my laptop, I can have a separate Zoom person, little thumbnail and all, that's my phone. And I've got this just on a, a selfie stick thing that is mounted to one of these pipes. So if I want to show that something looks like a hit from this angle, but show how much safe distance there is from an overhead, I can just go from here. I also found that useful a little bit when doing falls um, to be able to talk about like the shape you make when you land and some of that stuff. Sometimes it was helpful to have an overhead view. So that was, that was one thing I found useful. Another thing, just working in a small space, is uh, just being able to, to get wide enough and get far enough. I gave up on external mics just because they were too limiting um, when I'm trying to do combat-y type stuff, and sound has been less of an issue, but you do need to be able to get back from your computer enough that they can see your body, and that can be hard. Um, so another thing I found useful is these little clip-on wide-angle lenses. And there's a lot of different versions of these, clip-on, stick-on, whatever. These are made for cell phones, um, but I found that if I shaved away a little bit of the um, protective case that I had on my laptop, I can also set this uh, over my laptop camera. That gives me a wide angle that I can use on my laptop while I'm doing zoom. And I also love that I'm on a laptop so I can pick that up then and set it down on the ground or on a stool if I need a lower view when I'm talking about doing falls. Um, so that's, that's been really helpful. It's not the best image quality. I get a, a little, like little dust flex trapped in the lens. And so it, it does weird stuff, but it's not bad. And it gives me a wide angle option, which is really the only way to show how to do a fall, for example, um, without a camera being able to follow you. The other thing is I have this, uh, this cart and I got this 
it was about a hundred bucks on eBay. They had similar things on Amazon. Um, so this is a, a laptop cart. Uh, it's got a cup holder to stick on it because it's me and I always need my coffee. Um, so that can also fold up. And this is on wheels so I can move it around. I also ended up adding a, a separate tray for some of the other crap that I use. Um, and a hook here to hang up some of my stuff, a cable manager. And then this was a separate laptop stand thing. But what I found is while this cart was billed as a sitter stand laptop desk, um, it really didn't quite do the standing. I mean, I, yeah, this is not too low when it's at its highest, but the camera then was still looking up to get at me if I was standing, which meant that when I'm zooming, they're looking up my nose and they're not able to see what my body is doing and they see my ugly ceiling instead of the green screen. So I wanted another way to get the computer up higher. So I ended up getting this extra stand and screwing this to the other adjustable stand so that now I can get my laptop camera up to about this height. Um, that's about where it is, yeah. And so that gives me more of an ability to, to stand up and actually get back and, and have a, a conversation uh, while standing and talk about being able to do punches and sword moves and things like that especially in conjunction with that wide-angle lens. And I also have an uh, adjustable stool that allows me to, to sit <laughs> uh, while it's still at that height fairly easily so that I have options depending on what I'm doing in class. Um, yeah, what else? That's, I mean, those are the main things. We need to be able to see you. We need to be able to hear you. I've tried out some of these uh, wireless labs and, and things like that. Um, and again, they, they work but I think it was more bothered than it was worth for movement stuff. Um, when I'm just sitting and talking, I'll, I'll actually usually use those. Um, yeah, lighting, sound, where to put your computer, how to mount that, soundproofing, padding, training partner dummy stuff, uh, training tools. Yeah. Oh, one other thing. And this was my attempt at an idea I stole from uh, Damon Stiff and some others. Um, these were sold as like boxing things that like it clips onto a headband and so like you hit the ball and it's a reflex trainer and you can kind of dodge it, hit it, whatever. Um, I just clipped it onto some of the, the conduit <laughs> that's on my, uh, on my basement ceiling. But what I use this for, uh, I haven't used this much and I might more up as we get into some of these other concepts like avoids. Some of it's about being able to, to tell the idea of just missing and practice having a moving thing so it moves out of the way and you go where it was, right? If it's going, you're like, ah, and I just missed it. Ah, and I just, ah, just missed. Ah, just missed. Ah, just missed. Being able to, to have something to react to, to play with that idea of waiting until it's vacated a space um, as your cue to go for avoids, things like that, um, as well as potentially something that can move that I can react to. So that if I wanted to pretend to get hit by something, I could swing this back and use this as something to time off of. This, uh, this fake arm slash sword holder thing, um, I, I mounted it to a wood bracket that I then just strapped to the pillar, but those straps are big enough that I can also strap that to my punching bag. So I can also give my punching bag an arm, and that lets me move it a little bit because my punching bag can rotate. So I can have a little bit of that arm kind of moving this way. Not a ton though, so we'll see how much I actually go to the bother of moving it back and forth. Um, I have a feeling in practice I'll probably just end up leaving it there most of the time. So yeah, that's my, uh, that's, that's my online teaching setup um, and some of my tools in case that's helpful to anybody else who's in this strange world of trying to teach stage combat online right now um, or, or other movement stuff online that might have similar, uh, similar issues. Um, I wish you all best of luck. And I can't wait until we can all get back in person and do this for real because it's so much more fun that way. All right, take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay well.